Hello everyone and welcome back to Cooking with Suzanne. Today I'm going to share a recipe with you that we served at the restaurant Suzanne Fine Regional Cuisine and it was requested. This is not a dish that you would make Monday through Friday. It is definitely a dish that you would want to save for a special occasion. We really enjoyed serving this dish at the restaurant and I hope that you will enjoy it as well. This preparation has basically three recipes within this video. The first part of the recipe is making and preparing an herb butter. The second part will be making a sofrito, which is basically tomato and onion and olive oil. And then the third part is making a piperade. A piperade is basically sweet peppers that are roasted and they're stewed with a little bit of garlic and some of the sofrito. So there are a few steps that you do need to prepare in order to make this wonderful dish, which at the restaurant was halibut with Yukon gold potatoes, the piperad, and we topped it with this wonderful herb butter. There are a few ways that you can prepare this but how we did do it at the restaurant was with this wonderful fata paper. Fata paper is basically professional cooking foil. It is clear and it can bake in the oven up to 425 degrees, which is what makes it so wonderful. And it's clear. So when you put all of your ingredients on this beautiful fata paper, you then tie it up and bake it in the oven like this, and then you can present it in its own package. This product comes from Italy, and it's really fun. Okay, we have three recipes to prepare. The first one is going to be our herb butter. What you need for the herb butter is four ounces of unsalted butter, and you just want it nice and room temperature, and you want to add one teaspoon of lemon juice, fresh squeezed lemon juice, two tablespoons of fresh chopped parsley. This is flat leaf parsley. I think we can put all that in. And we also need a tablespoon of chives which is in the onion family. So I have some beautiful fresh chives. So let's just take our chives. And if you don't have chives, you can certainly just use parsley. I've also often put fresh thyme in with my herb butter. So let's talk about what you can use this herb butter for. This is wonderful to put a slice of this herb butter on top of a nice grilled steak. It's absolutely delicious. And then serve it even with a wedge of lemon and squeeze that over the top of the steak. So here is our beautiful chives. That's all I can smell. It's wonderful. It smells absolutely great. Okay. We also want to add one clove of garlic. And in this instance, I like to use my garlic press because you want to make sure that it's very finely minced. Another thing you can use this herb butter for, uh, if you have some roasted asparagus or fresh green beans, and you toss a couple of tablespoons of this wonderful butter, it would be delicious. I also use this herb butter to make chicken Kiev. And with the chicken Kiev, I would also even add a little fresh thyme to the herb butter. So this is very user friendly. Okay, we might as well also add our seasoning, which I'm going to just put in about a half a teaspoon of kosher salt and a little bit of fresh ground black pepper. Just mix this all together. The one thing about all the components to this dish is that you can make it all ahead of time which is very nice. And then it's easy to assemble once everything is, is prepared. Okay, this is nicely mixed. 
and put it right on our board here. Okay. And then just line up your herb butter here. And then you just want to bring both pieces over. Roll it and then just twist your sides, the ends, till you get a nice log. There. Now we have a nice log of herb butter. And what you want to do is just put this in your refrigerator and let it set up. And that's all there is to making this delicious butter. There's a number of different ways that you can roast peppers. Um, there's also espalette pepper, which comes from Spain, in the Basque region of Spain. And there are some piquillo peppers that get added to the sweet peppers. The piquillo peppers take on a little smokiness, a little smoky flavor, which also originated in Spain. So these ingredients will be added along with our sofrito. But in the meantime, the first thing we have to do is get our peppers roasted. So basically two red, two yellow. I have a yellow and an orange here. And I'm going to roast these whole. And I find this very easy to do. So I just kind of spray the outside a little bit with some pan and also my tray, just a tiny bit. And I have my oven set at 375 degrees. And in about 15 minutes or so, I'll just rotate them, turn them over until the skins are nice and wrinkly. And you know that the skin is separating from the flesh of the pepper. And that's when you know they're done. This can take at 375, this can take, I would say anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes. I will set my timer for 15 minutes and 15 minute increments until it is nice and wrinkly and I'll show you what it looks like. So let me get these in the oven. I would like to show you one of these piquillo peppers. They have a very specific shape to them. And in Spain, where tapas is very, very popular, they would stuff these. They would stuff it either maybe with some cheese or with cod. Um, there's various different fillings that they would stuff the whole piquillo pepper, roast them in the oven, and then you'd have a wonderful tapas or an appetizer. So we're going to use a few of these. I would say for the four peppers, Let's take about four of also the piquillo peppers. And there's lots of recipes out there for different ways, for different stuffings, so that you can use the rest of these peppers. And they are grilled, so sometimes you'll see a little bit of black skin, just make sure that you get rid of it. And these, you're just going to go ahead and slice. The flavor of these peppers are just delicious and they really do add another dimension to the stewed peppers. And here are our piquillo peppers. I'll put that aside. And now let's talk about making our sofrito. So for every one and a half cups of finely diced onion, you're going to need a half a cup of grated plum tomato, or you can even use a regular beefsteak tomato. Here we're going to use our plum tomatoes. Just take your tomato and basically what you're looking for is about a half a cup. Just split them lengthwise. You don't need to remove this, the skin. And 
just use your large hole grater and then just go in and just grate right until you get all of the flesh through the grater and all you have left is the skin. So here you have just the skin left. All right? And then we need to finely dice, about quarter inch dice, sweet onion, one and a half cups. So what else can you do with the sofrito? This is the start of making a wonderful rice dish, which also comes from Spain, a paella. And so you can certainly use some of this sofrito if you wanted to make a paella. Pick up our grater and let's see what we have here. Okay, we have just a little bit over a half cup, but not too bad. So about three plum tomatoes works perfectly here. So here is our grated tomato. And our next step would be to finely dice one and a half cups of sweet onion. So while I start to uh, dice our onion, I'm going to heat up a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. I, I'm going to start it on low. It will actually stay on low. I just have, you need about a nine inch saute pan. I'm just going to, it's quite a bit of oil. You can always use this oil for dressings and other dishes. So here's our half a cup of extra virgin. This is first press, cold press, extra virgin olive oil. It's important to have a really good flavor here. Okay, so I have my back burner on low and you do want it Super, super low. Start with one onion and see how we do. Split it in half. So you always take your blade and go downward. Never go towards your hand, go down towards your board. Hold it together with your pinky and your thumb. Hold your fingers up and then just follow the knife and your fingers back. This looks good. So let's take our final cup of onion and put it in our extra virgin olive oil. Okay, I'm just making sure that the onion is completely coated with the olive oil. And at this point, you want to add just a pinch of kosher salt. So add a pinch of kosher salt here. And that's our peppers for me to turn. Let me just show you what the onions, they're completely submerged with the olive oil. There's quite a bit of olive oil here. Hopefully you can see that. So let's set a timer for an hour. I will come up front so you can see. I'm going to turn over. You see how it's starting to darken? It's also, you can see the skin starting to shrivel up a little bit. So I'll just turn them over. Let's see how the yellow pepper is doing. Here's our yellow pepper and our reds are as well turning brown. So let's not forget about our clove of garlic. After the one to two hours, we will add the tomato. We will let that go for another hour or two, depending, you wanna see what it's going to look like. It may be ready in an hour. And then at the end, you will add this garlic clove that you have either finely minced or passed through a garlic press and an additional pinch of salt. You would then store it just the way it is in a container with the oil. But when you're getting ready to use the sofrito, you would drain the sofrito from the oil.
And you don't want the garlic to get dried out, so you can cover this uh, with a little piece of saran. Also, at the same time, you can see it's very little garlic. It's not that much. It's one large clove. I can even put the salt right in with the garlic now. A little pinch of salt and let that. And that is all that we have left for our sofrito is our tomatoes and our garlic. But we will leave that aside and when this is ready, we'll add the tomatoes. Now, a couple of other things that we need uh, would be some fresh thyme when it comes time to actually assembling. And also, nice large Yukon Gold potato. I think that's it for now. We have the herb butter done. We are starting with the sofrito and I am working on roasting the peppers. When the peppers are done, I will put them in a large bowl. I will saran it and let the peppers completely cool in the bowl covered. And then it gets very easy to be able to take the skin off and then you take the seeds off in the center and you're gonna go ahead and slice your peppers exactly like we did here with our piquillo peppers. So we'll continue to let those roast. Our peppers are almost done. They did take about 35 minutes. And I do want to show you exactly how the onions should be simmering very slowly. You can see them just slightly bubbling, just a little bit of a bubble. You let them take their time, cook nice and slow. And as I said, anywhere from an hour to two hours, but check them after the first hour. If they're very well cooked, they have some beautiful flavor to them, you can then go to the next step and add your tomatoes and let that go for another hour as well. Let me go grab the peppers so you can see them. Now you can see these beautiful roasted peppers. Let me just turn it around. And they're nicely roasted all the way around. You can see them fully. These are absolutely perfect and ready to cool down. Take the peppers, place them in a bowl. Yeah, these look great. Perfect. And this will take probably about 30 minutes for them to cool down. So the first thing I want to show you is what the sofrito looks like when it's done. This has been cooling for about 20 minutes, but here you can see how beautiful the mixture is. And you, there's a lot of oil still here. And now we're going to drain it so that we can use the sofrito. Just going to take, we're going to use about two to three tablespoons of sofrito. So I'm sure that's enough. I have a little strainer here, and I'm just passing the oil through the strainer. Now we're going to make the piperade. So here is, I have three of the peppers already done, but I did want to show you how nice it is and very easy to peel once they sit for about anywhere from 20 minutes to up to an hour. You can even put these in your refrigerator overnight and do them the next day if you wanted to. But the skin comes off very easily. And then all we have to do is remove the seeds and then we'll slice them. All this beautiful juice that's in the bowl here, I'm going to add to the peppers nice flavor there so once you open it up you can go ahead and remove the seeds very easy to do okay take all the peppers including the piquillo peppers and about an eighth teaspoon of the espalette pepper Put it all in the pan along with, we're going to do a good three tablespoons of the sofrito and then just a touch of vinegar. And the first thing we're going to do is take all of our beautiful sliced peppers, put them in the pan, 
Here were our piquillo peppers. I did four of them. About an eighth teaspoon of the espalette pepper. And then let's add a good three tablespoons of the sofrito. Take another half there. There we go. Good three tablespoons. And now what you want to do, we'll also season this with a little bit of kosher salt. Bring out all the flavors. You can even add a little bit of black pepper if you'd like. And now let's heat this up and then we'll put a splash of vinegar. We'll get that started and we're just going to cook that for about three minutes. And then we'll put a little splash of red wine vinegar just to brighten it up a little bit. And then we'll let it rest uh, until it's complete room temperature. Here you can see all of the beautiful peppers. Nice and sweet. Okay. So I'm going to just put that on medium and we can talk about our potatoes. All we have to do is, I'm going to use a mandolin, but you don't have to. What you're really looking is just to slice your potatoes about a quarter inch thick. So let me just dry that off. I had it in cold water. And I would say four to five slices per person is more than enough potatoes. I just have a little bowl here and we're just put the potatoes in, season it with a little bit of kosher salt and pepper and a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And I have a tray here and it's going to go in. You can go anywhere from 375 to 400 degrees and you're really not looking for a whole lot of color. You just, when you put a knife into the potato, it's fully cooked. That's all you're looking to do. So let's just do a little drizzle of olive oil. Okay. And season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. And then just give this a good toss. Make sure that all of the potato slices are nicely coated. Just line up the potatoes. And I would say they generally take about 20 minutes, anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes. Let's get these in the oven. When they're fork tender, I would say about 20 minutes, we'll take them out. So this has been cooking for about three minutes. And now we'll just put a little splash of red wine vinegar. Give it a stir and let this cool completely. So we're ready to prepare our fish. Everything is all prepped. All our mise en place is completely done and we are ready to go. So I'm going to put my fata paper down and I did mention that there are a couple of substitutes that you could use. You could use a nice sheet of parchment paper and fold it in half and put all of your ingredients on one side and then fold in all the edges and you could use parchment in the oven to make the same thing. You could, I think Reynolds also has, Reynolds Wrap also has a foil that you can take a sheet and do the same exact thing to same preparation. So if you don't have this, you can certainly go that route and it'll be perfect. So here is our fata paper. And the first thing you want to do is you wanna make sure uh, so that the potatoes don't stick because the potatoes have starch. And here are our potatoes, by the way. And I think that I mentioned that you're not looking for any color. You just want them fully cooked. And if you just take a little paring knife and go into the potato, it should be completely soft, which these are, and completely cool down. And here is our beautiful piperade, which looks delicious. So you have that all set. And we have our herb butter, which I have sliced a few slices of herb butter. 
and it smells fantastic. And we have two nice pieces of grouper. Down south, grouper and flounder are very, uh, they're local fish and they're really fresh and delicious. Up north, when we did this for the restaurant at Suzanne Fine Regional Cuisine, we always did it with either cod, which is very appropriate for this preparation, or halibut. And that fish tends to, both of those tend to be definitely thicker than a grouper. So if you do go with the halibut or the cod, it may take a little longer to cook because it is, the fish is actually thicker than this fish is here. So the first thing you want to do is season your fish with salt and pepper, black pepper. And I have some fresh thyme from the garden. And you wanna season it with, I have kosher salt here. Now our fish is nicely seasoned. I'll put this aside. And we're going to lie our potatoes down first, but before we do that, you can either spray your paper or your parchment with a little bit of pan, or you can brush it with extra virgin olive oil. I have extra virgin olive oil in this spray can, so I'm just gonna spray the center of the parchment with some olive oil. And then you just want to make a nice bed of potatoes, and these are all seasoned as well. And you wanna overlap it just a little bit. So I think we'll end up with about five, these are medium size slices of potatoes. So I would say I have five slices. I've made a nice bed in the center. I'll lift that up so that you can see that. So we have a nice bed of potatoes and now we're going to put a really good spoonful with the juices. And this is also very nicely seasoned so you're all set and ready to go. So put the peppers right in the center. This, if you love peppers, you will positively love this dish. Okay, we have a nice mound of peppers right on top of our potatoes and I will show that to you as well. There you go. And now we just need to lie our fish right on top of the peppers and take some butter and place the butter right on top with a nice sprig of fresh thyme right over the top of the fish. And I have here some butcher twine. So you want to take a piece of butcher twine and gather all four corners of the pocket paper. Okay. And then just tie it. And what I do is I don't knot it because you want, when it comes out of the oven, you want to replace the string, the butcher twine, with ribbon so that you can serve this in its package right at the table like this. So here you have your package all ready to go into the oven. Now I have the oven set at 400 degrees and I have a sheet pan in the oven heating up so that I can set these right on the sheet pan. So I have the pan heating up as well. Okay. While those are baking in the oven, I'm going to just give you a quick demonstration on how to use the, uh, the uh, parchment paper. I have folded it in half. I'm going to open it up and I'll just spray a little bit of olive oil in the center here on the right side. And I'll make a little bed with my potatoes. And a piece of butter and thyme. 
and then we can close and close this as well and we can bake this. You're just going to fold this over and all you're going to do is first closest to you, you want to fold it in about a half inch and fold it in again. Then turn it towards you and fold in again about a half inch and fold it in again. And then turn it again and do the same on this side. Okay, so here are all our three sides, all folded in twice. It should be good. You want to completely enclose it like so. And now we're going to just take this package and put it right into the oven and let this bake as well. So let's talk about the salt. At the table, I think a nice uh, fleur de sal, a nice sea salt is perfect. But there is another salt that I did serve at the restaurant. And this salt came from Brown Trading Company and it's called Fume du Sel. And it has a beautiful smoky flavor, which really enhances the piquillo peppers in here. So it really complements the fish very, very nicely. It's a beautiful salt. So if you ever see it or can get your hands on it, it's definitely worth something to try. So we're going to have that, uh, that we'll use that salt tonight with this fish. Okay, so I just took one out of the oven and I want to check to make sure that the fish is fully cooked. Just sneak in. You can also tell by touching it as well, but I'm going to just put my skewer in, hold it there for five seconds, and then, oh yeah, this is nice and warm. It is definitely ready. So at the restaurant, we would take the string off and put a nice ribbon. I have very little here to choose from, but we used to put some really pretty ribbons on here. And just fix the pot of paper on top and serve it like so at the restaurant. So it's like a present. It takes anywhere from, you, you really do, it depends on how thick your fish is. Uh, it can take up to 14 minutes depending on how thick it is. You can have a large spoon for each guest if you're actually entertaining. And you would just open up your gift. And there's lots of beautiful broth. And just take a large spoon and hold on to it and just slide it right on to the plate. There we go. Here is our beautiful presentation. It looks gorgeous. Potatoes sliding out. Let me come around and see if you can see it. It's beautifully cooked. There it is. It's wonderful. Fume will be so wonderful over the fish. Really compliment the piquillo peppers beautifully. Okay, I just wanted to show you with the parchment paper, just so if you can't get the fata paper, which by the way, here is the box so that you can see it once again in case you wanna to try to get it. But the parchment works beautifully as well. So let me open it up so that you can see it and get a good view of how beautiful. And you see all that delicious broth, which is so beautiful, look at that. And then you would do the same exact thing. We're going to grab a spoon here and just pick it up and bring it over to your dish and just use a nice large spoon to just push it off. You see, you just push it off 
and make sure that you get all that beautiful broth. Look at that. That looks great. And you can see that the fish is perfectly cooked and ready for you. So I just wanted to share that with you so that everyone can see that the parchment works just as nicely. Okay, thanks a lot, everyone.